Welcome back everyone. In the last video we talked about fish, the parts of fish, what makes fish fish, how they're different from us. Uh, now let's go in and talk about some individual species that you're very likely to encounter whenever you're just getting started in, uh, in fishing. Probably the most popular fish in North America is the bluegill. If you've ever caught a fish before, it's, it was probably a bluegill. Um, bluegill are incredibly plentiful. Literally any mud puddle that doesn't dry up during the summer probably has bluegill in them. Um, bluegill will show up in places that have never been stocked with fish and how is this possible well mostly thanks to birds a, um, a bird like a great blue heron will be feeding uh, along the shoreline of a lake in the early spring during the uh, the bluegill spawn and as they as they wade through the water they pick up uh, eggs um, then they they take flight they fly over to a very large mud puddle that doesn't dry up during the uh, summer and they wade around in that and the eggs are deposited and they eventually uh, hatch and since there's no predators in that particular lake other than probably birds um, they don't get eaten and they grow and you find bluegill in really some of the very strangest places so it's a very popular fish um, I think personally leave a comment the best tasting freshwater fish in North America um, they're just really, really, really yummy. Uh, the meat is very uh, light, uh, very firm, very sweet. Um, there's really nothing better than a great big, you know, mess of, of uh, bluegill. Bluegill are not terribly large. Uh, you can see on here the average size is about six inches. This number is actually increasing over the years. Our, our bluegill are getting larger. Um, it used to be that a six inch bluegill was considered pretty good. Now we're starting to get into eight, 10, 12 inch bluegill. We're getting bluegill um, over five pounds. I mean, right here, the world record uh, was four pounds, 12 ounces. This was probably like back in the 60s. Um, Minnesota and Arizona, they are re re routinely you know, catching five pound bluegill just absolute monsters a lot of that has to do with the invasive species um, that these fish are eating on we'll talk more about that later um, very easy fish to catch these guys primarily eat um, insects and minnows occasionally a small crayfish um, but if your main diet is insects and the only thing you need to do is to imitate an insect on a fly rod and you just have a whole bunch of fun now also notice that this fish is taller than it is wide it's a relatively it's a flat fish and whenever you get a feisty little bluegill turned perpendicular to your four weight fly rod you just have a real good time so wonderful coloration on a bluegill you may wonder why it's called a bluegill well it's this little patch right up here at the end of the gill cover and it's a real dark indigo blue um, hard and soft dorsal fin up here and anal fin caudal fin and this is called the what pectoral fin very good and down here we have the, uh, the the pelvic fin it's very close cousin is called the red ear okay pop quiz why do you think this fish is called a red ear exactly uh, typically a little smaller than than bluegill uh, we see them around here um, just as good eating just as uh, just as feisty. Uh, 
uh, probably a little wider in body than than a, a, a typical bluegill. Uh, they're also referred to as shellcrackers, and this is because they have a a, a favorite diet of um, of mollusk. Um, snails primarily and they've got really really strong jaws and they will will grab the the the, the, the snail and and crack the shell and uh, and and eat them uh, a lot of fun to catch we also get into white crappie white crappie are different primarily with the the vertical fins the the dorsal fin up here and the very large anal fin down here <clears throat> this is a white crappie and it, it does have a much much lighter color uh, it has a cousin called the block crappie we'll talk about that later um, typically a little larger than your average bluegill um, seven eight inches i would say would be very typical these are a different type of fish um, where bluegill tend to be a little more independent uh, roaming crappie are very much a schooling fish if you find one crappie you'll probably find a hundred um, they, they, they congregate. They're also a deep fish, typically 10, 12, 20 feet deep. You'll find uh, crappie where with bluegill, I mean, they'll be right at the surface. And if you walk around the lake, um, you'll see bluegill. I mean, they're right there. Remember they're eating primarily insects. So they're going to be a little higher in the water column. Uh, crappie dine primarily on minnows. So they're going to be deep. These guys are also referred to as paper mouth. Their mouth structure right up here is made up of very thin tissue. Uh, if It doesn't take very much to, to rupture this tissue, um, hence the, the term paper mouth. They have an incredibly large mouth for a relatively small fish uh the, the the mouth just opens up huge it, it almost like folds and then then opens up like origami uh it, it, it's incredible but remember they are feeding primarily on minnows and they'll use what's called a suction strike where they literally just open up their 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 mouth and flare their gills and create a suction that literally just sucks uh, the, the the prey right into them <clears throat> Lar uh, large mouth bass will also uh, use this type of strike i personally don't care that much for crappie to be honest with you for one thing they are a very slimy fish remember we talked about that mucus layer in the, uh, the the last video uh, crappie have mucus times 10 i mean they are just slimy and again this is part of their their protective system um you know protects them from from parasites but man crappie really kind of go overboard with this um you you need a rag um you know paper towels something um and at the same time whenever you're you're catching a fish like this you you, you don't really want to use a rag and and wrap the fish up whenever you're you're dehooking because you're stripping that mucus layer away from the fish we don't want to do that um really the best thing to do is to wet your hands and then handle the fish and either keep the fish or release the fish and then use the rag to wipe down your hands uh, we, we we don't want to to take away that mucus layer that's what's going to protect the fish from from parasites so the other reason i think i'm not a huge crappie fan is they don't taste all that good to me they're they're kind of i don't know <clears throat> bland um I would much prefer for bluegill over crappie. Now, crappie do have a an important place in the sport of uh, fishing. Um, they're sought out um, 
in tournament fishing. So you'll have crappie thons where they'll go out and tag um, a specific fish and people can register and enter the, the, the crappie thon and fish at their leisure. And if you catch one of these fish with like the red tag, um, you might win a hundred dollars. If you get the, the the crappie with the the gold tag, that might be a thousand dollars. You know, it's 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 a, a, a very popular um, a way of uh, uh, holding a tournament without being concentrated in you know one particular day. You'll see a lot of professional uh, bass fishermen quote-unquote retire to crappie because with the the t typical fishing technique you're going to be in a boat out on the lake and use some type of a, a, a fan rig where you use these very long poles and just basically probe you know brush piles uh, structure that the crappie will hold uh, uh, hold to with largemouth bass tournaments, you're out there casting, you know, two or three times a minute. I mean, there is a lot of repetitive motion, and believe it or not, there are fishing injuries, you know, that can be caused from this repetitive motion. And there's people say there's only so, you know, a fisherman only has so many casts in them, and when they exceed that, they have to retire to crappie fishing where you really don't have to, to cast. So let's move on to our next fish, and that is the largemouth bass. I can make this a short lecture, or I can make this a very long lecture. Okay, short lecture. The most popular fish in North America. Typical size, 14, 16 inches. Um, world record weight on here is 22 pounds, 4 ounces. This has been in dispute for several decades. Um, it's pretty rare to see a 10-pound largemouth bass uh, nowadays. Um, it, it, it happens, but it's not going to happen every day or every season. Uh, a, a typical large, largemouth bass is going to be six, eight to eight pounds. Um, that will win tournaments. This is the most heavily fish, uh, most heavily sought after fish in tournaments there's there's more bass tournaments than than any other um in north america and worldwide i mean the popularity of largemouth bass fishing just cannot be understated um personally i'm not a bass fisherman okay yeah i i, I hear all of you you know clicking off to uh to to drop this class no no seriously give me a chance here um sure largemouth bass are, are, are fun to catch um i've never been terribly impressed with their fight um you 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 catch them there there's really typically a very explosive attack uh, i know that that's that's incredibly thr thrilling and then they 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 fight uh, you know um four or five seconds and it's like okay i give up reel me in de-hook me throw me back we'll do this again sometime um bluegill <laughs> i mean those little buggers just never stop fighting i mean from the moment you set the hook to the moment you put them back in the water they are just uh, just just charging forward uh, with everything they have i'm not a big fan of eating largemouth bass um okay that's just me probably i mean who eats largemouth bass anymore i mean it, it just just doesn't really happen that much um it is an incredibly important fish the department of natural resources dnr uh, spends a lot of time and a lot of money you know concentrating on developing good largemouth bass fisheries why well this is kind of the money fish. This is the fish that draw all the fishermen in. 
you don't see people out there spending twenty thousand dollars on a bluegill boat but you will see fishermen dropping twenty thousand on a bass boat so it's economically it's an incredibly important fish in unit two we'll talk more about this uh, this species and its uh, international diplomacy role that it's had in the past now this is a very unique fish uh, catfish are different from the other fish that we've talked about Number one, it doesn't have scales. I mean, every first grader knows that fish have scales, except for catfish. And a lot of people just don't know this. They have skin. You've probably heard the term. There's more than one way to skin a cat. I do hope you were you knew that that was referring to catfish and not fluffy little felines, right? Okay, yes. Uh, whenever you clean a catfish, you skin the catfish. You, you don't scale um, a catfish. They have no scales. You scale a bluegill, and then you eat it. Uh, you skin a cat, and then you eat it. Um, catfish is very, very good. It's one of the principal aquaculture um, species in in North America we have catfish farms they raise catfish they harvest catfish they sell catfish to the supermarkets uh, you can go down to go over to um, Kroger and buy you know two pounds of catfish fillets they're absolutely tasty the meat is very firm very white um, honestly kind of tasteless it's it's one of those foods that you can kind of make taste like anything you want um, kind of like mushrooms or tofu uh, where, there, where there's not a real distinct taste um, uh, of the meat itself um, that's where typically the batter comes in and um, absolutely wonderful you know I I will put it up there with cod, um, a saltwater, you know, species. I, I, I really enjoy catfish. Um, not only does the catfish not have s scales, it has barbels. And you can see these guys hanging out right up here, or whiskers. And you may have um, heard that you have to be careful around catfish because you can get stung. And it was long thought that the the whiskers would sting you. Where, in fact, these, these barbels uh, are a sensory organ. Uh, this is used by the catfish in, um, in foraging. Typically, catfish are uh, most active uh, at night. They're a nocturnal feeder. And without, uh, you know, a good sense of sight, they will use these barbels to kind of feel along the, the, the bottom. Um, the other unique thing about catfish is that they are about 95% nose. In other words, there are olfactory nerves covering about 95% of their body. The entire fish smells. And I don't mean just after three days. I mean the, 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 the entire body of the fish can detect odors. And that's one way that they use to, uh, uh, to, to locate uh, food. It was a very popular concept uh, when I was growing up, you know, back in the Dark Ages, um, that catfish only at eight dead things. They were the scavengers, the, the vultures of the... Um, uh, of the water world. Not necessarily true. Um, they will eat things that are dead, but they will not eat things that are decayed. And you can have a, a, a minnow who has just died and a catfish will come up and eat it. You can also have a minnow that is injured and the catfish will come up and eat it. You can have a 
minnow that is not very quick and the catfish will come up and eat it. Um, there are some species like the blue catfish we'll talk about uh, next unit. Um, they really will only eat very active, um, alive swimming uh, creatures. They, they, they don't really go after uh, uh, dead bait or, or what's called uh, stink baits um, uh, very much at all. Continuing with the uniqueness of the catfish, right back here we have what's called an anapos fin. Nobody really knows exactly what the anapos fin is for. There was some conjecture that it could be used in mating. Um, that's kind of fallen by the wayside. Uh, scientists really don't know. Um, one thing that is used with the anapos fin is a, uh, a marking technique. If, a, if biologists are studying a group of fish or particular individuals even, oftentimes they will clip the anapos fin, you know, as, as a, you know, to mark them. Um, it's possible you could catch catfish with, without a, an anapos fin or, or one that's, you know, somewhat deformed. Uh, also notice very large anal fin down here. This is one way to identify the specific species of catfish by their number of rays. And we'll get into that a little bit more in, in Unit 2. Uh, other unique things. How do catfish sting you? Well, that actually comes from these barbels. Uh, I'm sorry, these uh, barbs up here on the leading edge of the pectoral fin and the dorsal fin. These are very hard bony structures that have literally barbs in them and they're sharp and if you don't handle these guys just right um, they, 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 they will cut you. Um, there is also a venom in the in the, the, the barb the, the ventum has an anticoagulant, which means that once you get cut, you'll bleed, and you'll bleed, and you'll bleed. And it honestly kind of freaks you out a little bit. Uh, I was uh, uh, taught that if I ever got stung by a catfish to rub their belly, that the slime on their belly would stop the bleeding and ease the pain. And... To be honest with you, I have found that to be true. I have no idea why. Um, the idea of rubbing a catfish belly starts to get into the, the weird and bizarre. Um, but, you know, <laughs> if you're standing there with a catfish and blood coming out of your, uh, your, your hand, you'll, you'll kind of try, try anything. There are dozens of species of catfish. Um, uh, this is a channel cat. Uh, but there's flatheads, there's browns, there's blues, there's white, there's blacks, there's spotted. Just all kinds of different species. We're only going to talk about a few of these. Um, this being a channel cat, these are raised by DNR in um, uh, fisheries and then used for stocking uh, various ponds. So if you go out and and go fishing for the very first time it is possible that you will will, will catch a, a catfish um, they're 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 very very popular 